So I got up early this morning um, and put my pots on the stove. And one method that I'm going to use today is I'm going to use old jars and old lids. So what I did this morning was I got up and I um, set up my pots that I was going to use for cooking, for sanitizing or boiling the jars. And um, I put the jars in here. So they'll be in, been in here for a while. And that gets rid of a lot of the residue when you do that. Let me show you one more time. And these are old jam jars that I purchased that I saved over the years. And I have a lot of them. I saved most of them. And the lids are in the back over here. Let's see if we can get to those. And they're sitting in hot water and they're on. So I get ready to use them. As you can see right here. And these are old lids. And I keep them. And I use them again. The, the keeping them in hot water and bathing them in hot water while I'm ready to set up myself for preparing for the um, process of cooking the jam is so helpful I like doing that um, and there's another way that I do it a lot of people take those jars and they put them when you when you do regular water based canning you usually put the contents of whatever you're using to can back into the jar and then you um, take it and you put it back into the water so that it can uh, cook for another however minutes and then um, you take it out so it can seal. I don't use that method at all because of the reusing of the jars. So I hope that I can incorporate this into the videos of me doing the pineapple ginger canning this morning um, or today uh, or in the video so that you can see how or which process I use. To see. I don't necessarily need to see it in there. Okay, so I'm gonna tell you, ladies and gentlemen, what I do. I um, <clears throat> when I'm getting ready to make pineapple jam, I take the pineapple and I slice it, as you can see here, and I let that marinate in the refrigerator for about a week. And whatever fruit I'm going to incorporate with the jam, in this case would be ginger, I add it to it and let it marinate with it. I do not remove the core. I remove the core after the marination. And add about two tablespoons of sugar, raw sugar, in this container here that I'm marinating. All of this right here, um, I'm cutting off and I cook it down. But before I cook this down right here, I will chop it up a little bit more. So right now all my process is just cutting it away from the core. To me the core helps it um, become more flavorful doing the marination process. And this right here you see is the ginger. And 
It's a tedious task, but to me, the tedious task helps with the flavor when you do it this way. Yeah, let's put that back in there. Now with the core, I know you're asking, what do I do with the core? Well, with the core, I put the core in a pot and I let it steam or simmer, simmer for 30 minutes and I drink the tea off of that also. Because the core has um, benefits along with the peel of the pineapple. So not only do I drink the core tea, but I also drink the peel of the pineapple. I clean it really well and then um, I put it in a pot and I steam it and I drink it. The medicinal benefactors of the peeling and the core is that it helps with inflammation. It has an ingredient that I probably will put on the page when I um, upload this video. And it helps with the pain that you have from inflammation that's associated with arthritis or many other um, autoimmune diseases. Now, during this process of canning this pineapple, one thing that I'm going to show you, I'm not canning a pineapple, let me correct myself. I'm making pineapple jam, pineapple ginger jam, which is one of my favorites. I ran into this flavored jelly, uh, wow, jam, uh, probably about six years ago or more when I was at um, a local retail store that sold jams, and they had pineapple ginger jam and I was like oh my goodness let's try this and I will tell you the ginger obviously gives it a kick I'm gonna have to put that in a bigger pan and it's definitely too small hold on guys um gives it a kick and makes it take uh makes it um better with flavor I mean it's absolutely now this other pan can be used for extra pan if I need to. Okay, that's a little bit better. And so I enjoyed it. And you can eat it on anything. Bread, pineapples. It wasn't it's not a cracker thing. Look at those seeds. Those are seeds. I'm gonna keep those seeds. Let me see what I can do with them. I've never heard of you having a pineapple seed. You usually grow it from the pineapple's top. But I'm going to try and see if, what I can do with those seeds. I'm going to read up on it anyway. It's probably a whole different process. Some fruits have to go through a process before it's just a little pineapple here. It um, has to go through a process before you can, before it can grow. And so, um, it was delicious. I lost my thoughts. I'm coming back to it. It was absolutely delicious. Now, for those who don't know, I've been canning. I was taught to can, I should say, by my parents, by my mother, actually, and um, my aunts, my father's sisters, years ago. They taught us how to can, my mother and myself. I mean, years ago, I'm talking about early 70s, when we were there, 73 to be exact. And we would go um, picking peaches, and then everybody would come home, and we would sit in the yard of one of my aunts, and we would uh, pick peaches. 
I mean, I'm sorry, we would can peaches. The old fashioned process. They literally would light a fire in the yard, um, as I can remember. It might not even been a fire. It could have been something like a um, a cooker um, that was attached to propane. And they had big pots. These were the, the largest pots, close to restaurant size. And they would um, put that pot on the fire. And they would can those vegetables in the yard. The whole process was done in the yard. It was not taken in the house. It wasn't processed in the house. It was done in the yard, guys. And I can remember that to this day. And my mother was taught at the same time I was. And, um, that's the core. And, um, might have been pineapple. That's okay. And we would sit there all day, the following day after picking peaches. And this was in Georgia. And they would make peach, uh, canned peaches. And this was water bath. There was no sneak, there was no pressure cooking. This was water bathing. So, I think pressure cooking or um, pressure canning it is an old process, but my aunts did not use it. I don't remember that at all. I remember water bathing, cooking, and canning. Fruits especially, I think, is done that way. Uh -huh. And we and they did, I mean, hundreds, there were hundreds of jars of this. I mean, hundreds of jars of this, totally. Just hundreds of jars pressure can This is my little hang around. Let's see I want to put right here. Hundreds of jars. Of, um, yeah. It was so many that we took home I think two cases of peaches that year. Um, canning peaches. I'm saving these seeds. I want to know. So now what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to chop these up a little bit more. Let's get this over here in the way so you can see it. I think I'm going to chop these up a little bit more um, by hand. And then I just want it chunky. I don't want a uh, fine ginger. I don't want a fine jam. I mean, I want just a... Chunky jam. I want a chunky jam. That's how I want it. These are so good. This is so good on biscuits. I moved all this stuff here out of the way because I needed the room. But like I was restricting myself and I did drink the juice. <laughs> it was delicious. And and the thing about drinking the juice versus buying the juice is that I think you get more of the purity from drinking the juice from the actual fruit than buying it from the store. I know Aldi sells a pineapple juice for about $3.89. It's non-concentrated, but I think um, even if it's non-concentrated, um, and that means that it has pure fruit, they also add some sort of preservative so that it doesn't go bad. So I, I have at one time purchased that and I drink it when I can't find pineapples um, or the pineapples that I find are really expensive because they reached about $4.99 a piece this year. And I was like, wow, that's so expensive. But when you think about it, it's not compared to the medicinal value that those, this fruit has for the human body versus a hospital bill <laughs> so that was not good thinking on my part i should have i should have bought that i should just buy pineapples uh, uh, anyway you don't base i know the summers we base um purchasing fruits and vegetables on price we're not thinking about um 
the medicinal value, um, the benefits it gives your body by eating it naturally. You know, oh, the apples are six ninety nine a bag. That's so expensive. Yeah, but what does the apple do? What does the apple do for your body? How does it improve your health? A bottle of pills will run you somewhere from, well, depends. If, if you don't have Medicaid or Medicare, a, a bottle of pills can run you hundreds of dollars. And we, we will find the money to purchase that, that bottle of pills that the doctor gave us. And don't think twice about it because the doctor gave it to us. But when it comes to eating fruits and vegetables, we put a price value on it. And that's something that we should not do. Fruits and vegetables are good for the soul. And I think it's something that we inherited. Looking at the price value of foods that are good for us. And yes, they do charge us a little bit more for uh, vegetables and fruits than they do anything else. Yes, they do. It costs us a little bit more. Then the candies, the candy and the sugar contented food that we buy in the store. I remember um, a couple of years back, um, I realized that when I walked into one grocery chain, that when you walked in, there was sugar, pies, cakes, candies, donuts, was the first thing you saw when you walked into that store. And then the fruits, of course, was to the right of the sugar candies and everything else. But that's how society play a part of us not being healthy sometimes. Is that, you know what? If you get sick, it costs a lot of money to get well. Trust me, I know. I'm a patient of rheumatoid arthritis. And I love sugar. I mean, it's something that I just love. I love sugar. See, that has a seed in it. I don't want that in there. I want, this. I want to save the seeds. And so, um, with that being said, a lot of us, we love the sugar and, and we don't recognize the processed foods. When I <clears throat> so that year we just took home a lot of peaches. But it was a tedious task during that day. And then we got up early that morning and the peaches were cooked. The pills and they were cooked. In large pots. Nothing like I've ever seen. The experience taught me not to forget how to do it. When we left that year to come back home, my mother continued to can stuff. But she never used a pressure cooker because she was scared to. She didn't like them. She knew that they would explode. <laughs> So she didn't use the pressure cooker. We had one friend of the family that was the pressure cooker expert. And she would come over whenever she would cook dinner for us. She would bring that pressure cooker and uh, cook dinners with the pressure cooker. That was dinners, not canning. So it was interesting. So if you look in here, you can see all the juices. That's the seeds. I'm going to figure out. I'm going to do some investigating on that seed, on those seeds. Let's see what you can do with pineapple seeds. Because those are definitely seeds. It comes off the skin of the uh, pineapple. You know, I mentioned before that I take the skin of the pineapple and I simmer it. And then I uh, drink it as a tea. I think I saw it on YouTube, the benefits behind drinking, As a matter of fact it was on YouTube, my house. the benefits of drinking, you see me cutting away that's this stuff, I love it. the benefits of drinking pineapple skin tea for inflammation, and guys, I'm going to tell you something, ladies and gentlemen, this helps with pain so much. Down. Yep. Give me the seed in there. 
so. Let's see, that's juice right there. That's actually juice you could drink if you wanted to. As a matter of fact, I think that's what I may do with it. Let's drink it as a juice. Put it in there. whether or not it's a seed to whether or not I'm going to hand chop this or put it in um, in my um, ninja bullet because I have one of those but I don't want it I don't want it refined I don't want it not chunky I want it a little chunky and that ninja bullet can really make it fine. It, it'll blend it to a juice. It literally will blend it to a juice. So now what I'm going to do is, I think I'm going to chop these up a little bit more. Let's get this over here in the way so you can see it. I think I'm going to chop these up a little bit more. Um, by hand and then I just want it chunky I don't want a uh, fine ginger I don't want a fine jam I mean I want just a a, a chunky jam I want a chunky jam These are so good. This is so good on biscuits. I moved all this stuff here out of the way because I needed the room. But like I was restricting myself. And I did drink the juice. <laughs> it was delicious. And and the thing about drinking the juice versus buying the juice is that I think you get more of the purity from drinking the juice from the actual fruit than buying it from the store. I know Aldi sells a pineapple juice for about $3.89. It's non-concentrated, but I think um, even if it's non-concentrated, um, and that means that it has pure fruit, they also add some sort of preservative so that it doesn't go bad. So I, I have at one time purchased that. And I drink it when I can't find pineapples um, or the pineapples that I find are really expensive because they reached about $4.99 a piece this year. And I was like, wow, that's so expensive. But when you think about it, it's not compared to the medicinal value that those, this fruit has for the human body versus a hospital bill. <laughs> so that was not good thinking on my part. I should have I bought that. I should just buy pineapples anyway. You don't base. I know that some of us we base um, purchasing fruits and vegetables on price. We're not thinking about um, the medicinal value, um, the benefits it gives your body by eating it naturally. You know, oh, the apples are six ninety nine a bag. That's so expensive. Yeah, but what does the apple do? What does the apple do? For your body, how does it improve your health? A bottle of pills will run you somewhere from well, depends if, if you don't have Medicaid or Medicare, a, a bottle of pills can run you hundreds of dollars, and we, we will find the money to purchase that that bottle of pills that the doctor gave us, and don't think twice about it because the doctor gave it to us. But when it comes to eating fruits and vegetables, we put a price value on it. And that's something that we should not do. Fruits and vegetables are good for the soul. And I think it's something that we inherited. Looking at the price value of foods that are good for us. And yes, they do charge us a little bit more 
for uh, vegetables and fruits than they do anything else. Yes, they do. It costs us a little bit more than the candies, the candy and the sugar contented food that we buy in the store. I remember um, a couple years back, um, I realized that when I walked into one grocery chain, that when you walked in, there was sugar, pies, cakes, candies, donuts, was the first thing you saw when you walked into that store. And then the fruits, of course, was to the right of the sugar, candies, and everything else. But that's how society play a part of us not being healthy sometimes, is that, you know what? If you get sick, it costs a lot of money to get well. Trust me, I know. I'm a patient of rheumatoid arthritis, and I love sugar. I mean, it's something that I just love. I love sugar. See, that has a seed in it. I don't want that in there. I want, this. I want to save the seeds. And so, um, with that being said, a lot of us, we love the sugar, and, and we don't recognize the processed foods. When I, we don't recognize the processed foods, or maybe we do. But those pot pies, and those instant dinners, instant rices, those are all processed foods. And it's okay to eat them, don't get me wrong. I'm not down them, I love them myself. I love the rice and the pot pies. There's something in those vegetables, and something in those foods, that has a craving, <laughs> a, a craving additive in it. Well, you just sit down one night and you go, wow, I can eat a pot pie right now. Or I can have me a, a pot of rice aronis. And we do it. We all do it. But that food, if it's not done in moderation, will kill you. When I looked up the reason why I had rheumatoid arthritis, it was because of processed food, basically. Everybody cannot digest those preservatives that are in those foods. And they go straight to your weakest part at the moment and cause you not to, to walk. I guarantee you that if we all did a case study, we all at some point was eating the same food at the same time. That's a ginger. The same food at the same time. Um, during the same period, because we all about our age, about my age, all at some point have bad knees. But then if you take an individual who ate or had in their diet more fruits and raw vegetables, I just say raw vegetables and raw fruits, they're walking. They don't have any arthritic problems at all. And that's because their diets were different. Everybody don't have it. I didn't realize there's so many seeds. I don't want to save them. Something you could do. Something on YouTube can tell me what I can do with those seeds. YouTube is the, is the modern day encyclopedia. <laughs> Anybody young looking at this encyclopedia? Back in the day, we had to go to the library if we didn't have a set of encyclopedias. They, they literally used to come to the house and try to sell your parents encyclopedias. But we used to go to the library and we had to do research for things. See, that's, that's nice there. I like that chunky on that. I hear my pots. Let's see what's going on. Let's turn them down a little bit. Okay, let's put that down. I don't want to. I just want them to stay hot. I don't want them to boil. Okay. So we had to go to the library to study. <laughs> now you just Google it. Life has changed in my day. Uh, I'm not going to keep you here while I am chopping this up because this is going to take quite some time. And I'm going to do it by hand. I just decided that that's what's up, what I'm going to do. Because I don't like it. the way that's going to turn out. Okay, so when I get all this chopped up, I'll be back. Okay, I have everything in the pot now. And I chopped up, I would say three quarters of it, maybe even more, 
um, by hand just so I can have the chunky effect of the um, jam and I also the the other quarter of it I literally use the <laughs> the neutral bullet um, and it was mostly ginger so that ginger is incorporated in this as fine it's, 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 it's grandeur it's been blended let's put it that way so it's a, a fine texture and it was spicy because I tasted it <laughs> as I was getting ready to incorporate it into the pot with the chunks and all I got was ginger and that's perfect because I want it to be a spicy ginger pineapple jam so this is what's going on now <laughs> we're waiting for this to cook I have it on a medium heat I don't cook it fast I always slowly cook it because once again I want the flavor I want it to slowly become flavorful so it's going to cook slowly on a little bit past a medium heat I don't want to bring it to a rapid boil and then I will incorporate the sugar okay so I'll bring you back once I incorporate the sugar I'm sorry you missed all the in between but wow at some point this just became overwhelming but I'm going to give you an example of something that I saw on YouTube with mama's sister daughter um, and we were talking about saving old jars and reusing them to can this is a perfect example I literally saved these jars and I have been saving jars now probably for about I would say six years and being asked why are you saving those jars because my mother always told me never throw the jars away you can reuse them to can she said especially if they have the pop tops use the same method you would as if you are buying the regular ball mason jars and you can use these to recan um, most jams jellies and fruits so here's a perfect example of me reusing the jars to can the pineapple ginger jelly and they came out fantastic I used the exact same method that I learned from my mother and I also took the refresher course with Homestead Heart <laughs> on recanning on canning um, pineapple jam but this here is pineapple ginger jam and so I literally have reused them the reuse, reuse the jars and they're sealed every one of them are sealed and this is not the first time I did uh, blueberries earlier blueberry jam earlier this year that I did not video so if you have jars that have the pop tops heat the lids sanitize the jars use the exact same method as if you were using the mason um, ball mason cannon jars and Use the vinegar to wipe the tops of the jars clean so there's no residue or any leftover um, syrup or water or fruit from which you are using to can. And guess what? They're sealed. Absolutely sealed. And we've been eating them. This one here, just sealed. And now I have approximately nine jars of pineapple ginger jelly. I'm going to show you the process maybe in a later video, but tonight it was just chaotic. So um, I used a lot of things that I had already in the house uh, versus the correct tools, but I definitely need to go ahead and get the correct tools to to jar the, uh, the jams. And uh, then I will show you how and what process I use to um, can this. Um, these this jam and it is delicious it is absolutely delicious so it's gonna sit here and cool off and then tomorrow um, it'll be ready to eat and I'll probably eat that one because it has the least amount but these right now as we speak right before I well actually before I started the video to let you know how the outcome of the day was this one here popped Pop. <laughs> so thank you for watching